Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed how to charge materials using contact method. And in contact method, we said if you want it positive recharged, then you use a positive recharged rod. And if you want a material negatively charged, then you use a negatively charged rod. We also discussed how to charge a material using induction method. And in induction method, we said if you want it positive recharged, you use a negatively charged rod. And if you want it negatively recharged, then you use a positive recharged rod. And in the two methods, you charge materials separately. Now, in this lesson, we are going to see how to charge materials at once. And in this case, we are going to use a method which we call a separation method. So in separation method, we are going to see you are going to charge a material positively and negatively at once, and you are going to use a single charged rod. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy this video. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how you can charge a material both positively and negatively using separation method. And we are going to begin by using a positive recharge rod to charge two materials, one positively and the other one negatively. Then later, we are going to use a negative recharge rod to charge two materials, both positively and negatively by using separation method. So to charge two bodies using separation method, we have said one will acquire positive charges, the other one will acquire uh, negative charges. And so in this case, you need two bodies. Like in this case, you will have the ball A, and then you will have ball B, and then you will support them using an insulating material. And this insulating material will just prevent electrons from moving from the ground to the balls. This is an insulator all from the directions moving from the ball to the ground. So this in it balls are electrically neutral. The number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And the second one, or ball B, is also electrically neutral. And then you will need a charging rod. You will need a charging rod here, which you will use to charge the two bodies. So this is the charging, charging rod. Now for you to charge them, you need to bring them together in such a way that they behave like a uniform or a continuous conductor. So you will take ball A, this ball A, then it should be in contact with the ball B. Now when they are in contact with their insulating material like this, with their insulating material like this, then what you do, remember it is electrically neutral, number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, then now what you do, you will bring your charging rod here. You bring your charging rod here, this is a charging rod, which is either positively or negatively, we are going to see this case. So if it is positively charged, if it is positively charged, it's going to attract opposite charges that, has, uh, that are electrons. So if it attracts electrons, to ball A, then it's going to repel protons to ball B. So after it has attracted all electrons to ball A, then ball B will, will acquire the positives which will be repelled. Then now you will first separate ball B. You will first separate ball B so that it goes with the positive charges. Then next you will separate the charging rod. This is the second one to separate so that now ball A will remain alone with the negative charges. And if you have the charging rod as negatively charged, then it will attract the positives to ball A and repel negatives to ball B. Then first thing you do, you separate the one which is far away from the charging rod. So you will separate ball B, which will be having negatives which have been repelled. And then second, you separate the charging rod. Then you will remain with the ball A with positive charges. So we are going to see examples in the next part. 
So we are going to charge two bodies positively and negatively using separation method. And in this case, we are going to use a positively charged rod. So here, the first procedure is that have two bodies, bodies which are electrically, which are neutral. So you have two bodies which are neutral. And when you are writing your procedure, you should accompany it with a diagram. So you have two bodies which are neutral. And in this case, you have them like this. This is a silver, a silk thread. So you, have, you are suspending them with a, sil a silk thread, which is neutral, which will make sure that the electrons cannot flow out of this ball. So this one is electrically neutral. Number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And the other one is also electrically neutral. Number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So if this is ball A and this is also ball B, then what you do next, the second procedure, is that now bring the two bodies in contact with each other. Bring the two bodies in contact with each other with each other and then you accompany it with a correct um, uh, diagram then now here you draw the first ball that is ball a then which is suspended close to ball b and now they are in contact like that so this ball a this ball b and they are electrically neutral even when they are in contact so this one is electrically neutral like that. The other one is also electrically neutral like that. This means the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Now, after you have brought them together like that, then the third procedure, the third procedure here, in this case, is bring a positively charged, bring a positively charged rod close but not touching close but not touching ball a so you will bring a positive recharge rod close but not touching ball a and what will happen you draw a diagram to represent that so here you will have a positive recharge rod here this is a positive recharge rod like that then you have the two bodies which are in contact now ball A, then we have ball B, and they are in contact, this is A, this one is B, and then now when you bring them like this, remember, the, the charges on the charging rod will attract the opposite charges from this ball, look at this, we have a positively charged charging rod, so it will attract opposite charges from the two balls, remember when these two balls are in contact, they are forming a, uniform, a, a continuous conductor. So even the electrons which are in ball B will be attracted to the far end of ball A. So in this case, we will have our three electrons which were in ball A like that. And then the, the electrons which were in ball B will also be attracted to this far end like that. So ball A will have three electrons which were there and three electrons which were there in ball B. And then ball uh, B will have three protons which have been repelled, remember, and like charges repel. So the protons from all the, the, the positive charges on the charging rod will repel the positive charges on ball A and that, that one which were in ball B and they will move to the far end of ball B. So it will, it will contain now uh, positive charges which were in ball A and the positive charges which were in ball B. Then now, the, third, the fourth procedure now, the fourth procedure that they have been attracted, the negatives, positives have been repelled, then now you say remove, remove ball B. Remove ball B first then remove the charging rod second remove the charging rod 
second. So you should note here the, what you will remove first. So first you will remove ball B. So this ball B here will be removed first. Then the charging rod here will be removed second. Now if you remove a ball B first, then you will remain with something like this. You have removed the ball B, then you will remain with a charging rod like this with the ball A close to the charging rod having the, neg the negative charges uh, which have been attracted by these positive charges. So this is ball A which will remain here. And then ball B now has already been separated. Ball B has already been separated and the positives which were there on the far end will redistribute themselves inside this ball B. So ball B will gain positive charges. So the positive charges which were there will redistribute like that. Therefore, it acquires a positive charges. Then now in the next step, this ball B, remember? Now the next step we have said, you remove the charging rod, you remove this one. If you remove this one now, then ball A, this ball A now will remain like this. Ball A will remain suspended like this. And then the electrons which have been attracted by this charging rod, which has been removed, will redistribute themselves inside this ball A like that. And then we will have ball A negatively charged. So ball A will become negatively charged. Then ball B will become positively charged. This is very important to note. So look at this. The ball which was close to the charging rod. Look at the diagram in procedure 3. This is the charging rod here. The ball which was close to the charging rod, that's ball A, will acquire opposite charge like the charging rod. Charging rod is positive. Ball A will acquire a negative charges. Then the ball which is far from the charging rod will acquire similar charges like the one in the charging rod. That's why ball B will acquire uh, positive charges. So in this case, we are only using the idea of the law of electrostatics to charge these two balls uh, by separation method. Now, we can also charge uh, bodies separately by separation method, but in this case, we can use a negatively charged rod. So in this case, the first procedure, I'm not going to write the procedure, but I'm going to draw the diagram which represents each procedure. Then now, as an assignment, you will write the procedure. So the first step now, you will need two balls, A and B. You will need two balls, A and B, which are electrically neutral. This one is electrically neutral like that. And then the other one is also electrically neutral like that. Then after this, procedure B now, or procedure tool, you will bring these two charging or these two uh, bodies, which are electrically neutral, in contact with each other. You will bring them in contact with each other, this ball A and this ball B, so that they make something like a continuous conductor. Then in this case also, ball A is electrically neutral still, and ball B is also electrically neutral. Number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Then now the third procedure, the third procedure, you introduce now in this case a negatively charged rod. So to these two balls A and B, now you will introduce a charging rod. And in this case, the charging rod which we are going to introduce is negatively charged. Now, when you introduce a negatively charged rod close to these balls which are in contact, what will happen? the negatively charges or the negative charges on this charging rod will attract opposite pole or, or opposite charges from the two conductors in such a way that the positives which are there in ball A and B will be attracted close to the charging rod like this. Then the one which were in ball B will also be attracted to the charging rod like this in such a way that ball A will contain the positive charges only and then the 
similar charges like the charging rod will be repelled. So since the charging rod is negatively charged, it will repel the 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 negatively charges or the negative charges to ball B. This ball B. So in this case, all the negative charges will be repelled to the far end of ball B because opposite or uh, like charges repel. So in this case, if we move to step four, step four now will be you remove ball B first. So the ball B is the one which is removed. This one will be removed first, then followed by the charging rod, and then you will remain with ball A at the middle. So if you remove ball B, then you remove the charging rod, then you will remain with these two diagrams or these two balls A. Ball A will remain here. Ball A with the erect, with the protons which were attracted, they distributed within the surface of this material like that. So it will become positive recharged. And then ball B, which was far end of this uh, charging process, will also uh, the, the, the electrons which were repelled to the far end of this material will be redistributed within the surface of this ball B. So ball B here in this case will become negatively charged and ball A will become positively charged. And now look at this. The ball which is far away from the charging rod which was negative will become negatively charged. The ball which is far away from the charging rod will acquire the same charges as the charging rod. And then the one which was close to the charging rod will become positively charged, which is opposite to the charging rod. So it's very important to note this. So that marks the end of our lesson today. For any questions and clarification, you can ask a question below this video or visit ECLIMU Learning Simplified website for more questions, notes, and other resources.